Hi, Lee. How you doing? Tom, yeah, very good, thank you. Uh, very, very good. The joys of technology. <laughs> okay, guys, thanks for joining. We'll just give it a few minutes until we start to, uh, to see a few more people join. Just want to thank you for coming on online tonight. Just wanted to, to give players the opportunity for 20, 25 minutes to ask questions away to myself and uh, director Lee Holmes. Um, I'll let e Lee just begin with a little bit of introduction about himself. Are we are we waiting or are we are we going a little bit? Yeah, we'll give another minute or so and then we'll uh, we'll, we'll begin. Just thought it'd be good uh, to let everybody know who you support as well back in England. Big big big. I I, I big support you on Wednesday, so big big game on uh, Monday against Barnsley. Actually, where where one of our players is at? Hopefully, guess again. <laughs> Disappeared for a second, Lee. I was, just, I was just about to ask you a good question. Obviously, we we have a success story at Barnsley um, with with Coops being there. Um, you're a massive Sheffield Wednesday fan. It's like, oh, which way do we go? Oh, you put me under, you put me under pressure here. Uh, it's, it's a difficult question. I, I'm going to have to say. I'm going to have to let's, say Sheffield. Let's, let's, let's hope let's hope Coops gets involved. Um, and then we can we can score the winning penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or gets on and, and saves a few. That'd be nice. Saves four and you score five. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Okay, mate. Do you want to begin? Yep. Yeah. So, guys, it's uh, same as Tom said. Great having you on here tonight. And um, today, what we're going to be talking about is is purely uh, for the combine. Um, we, we've got a really good um, summer programme coming up. Um, really excited to be, uh, to be going around all, all, all the states um, or different parts of the states uh, trying, to, trying to find the next, next talent. So, yeah, now look, really looking forward to it. My, um, as you, you may or not know, my, my name's Lee Holmes. I've been over here now working for PSC for a little while. Um, done a few tours in, um, in Europe, um, seen, seen an awful lot of players from America and um, it's, been, it's been brilliant. Um, my background is I played professionally in England for, for 17 years, um, recently, uh, recently retired, um, finished a few years ago and that's where I, I, I became back in touch with, with Tom, um, thankfully, now working for, for PSC, uh, done all my badges back in England. And now, um, now looking forward to uh, to working and helping develop the next uh, the next crop of talent from from the states, and hopefully helping them to go on to, to bigger and better things. So, um, yeah, now really excited for this next few uh, few months, and hopefully um, uncover some um, some really good talent. Thanks, Lee. Um, yeah, like you said, we've we've been doing these events for a long time, for twelve years now, and helped a lot of players get into the professional game. Uh, I've been running running PSC throughout that time and had lots of talented players. So um, just a little bit about myself. I, I've been uh, a player over here, mainly in the USL, uh, and also coached in the USL. And we've been doing these successful combines, uh, helping players uh, get to play all around the world in, in the US, different levels, over in Sweden, different parts of Scandinavia, even into England. So, um, yeah, this is a chance for, for players really to ask, ask away at, ask us different questions over the next 20 minutes and, and any concerns or thoughts that they may have. Hopefully we can, we can help you. Sure. We won't get to answer every single question. Um, so if for some reason we don't answer your question, then please feel free to shoot us a message and we'll get back to you as, as quick as we can. Um, like Lee said, we've, we've got six different events going around different States starting in June, we start in Phoenix where we have um, the EPSL program actually Lee's running. Uh, then we go to Atlanta, Georgia, in the middle of June, uh, followed by California, 
down in San Diego again, where we had a really event, good event last winter. Uh, then to Miami, where we've again had lots of good success stories over the, over the last ten years or so, and, and then finish off in in Houston and in New York, which is always a big event. So going to lots of different places, and hopefully we can we can find lots of talent again, as we always do. I'm just uh, sorry, Tom. I'm looking for for some questions, but. Uh... Yeah, I think from, from my point of view, um, I've been to most of the combines now and um, most of the areas that we do. Is there any, is there any particular um, reason why we, we go to them, them cities or um, is there, yeah? Yeah, I mean, we've gone, we've gone to lots of different places, not just the ones that we're going to, to this summer, but um, usually, you know, California, Texas, Florida, New York, you know, the, in terms of the catchment areas of the players and, and making travel as easy as possible with the amount of flights in these areas, then typically we'll go back to the same place. And as well as the relationships we develop with, with clubs and coaches in the area, so we can get to see, see the best talent available. And of course, we bring in different coaches and clubs. We, we want them to be able to see as, as much quality as possible. That makes sense. And um, I think from my point of view, I, I love there's certain, there's certain places that, that I like going to see. I, I like going down to, to Florida um, because I think we've seen, certainly from my point of view, seen um, a real um, flurry of talent, uh, certainly on my, my little uh, visits down there and, and sort of Houston as well. I think we've seen some really, really talented players down in, in Houston, um, New York. Is, is one that obviously I know you was going to speak on it, but Anthony um, came from, um, did really well and finds himself now playing um, Europa, um, yeah, European football next season or this season, uh, which, is, which is great. So I think there's uh, so many uh, great places and cities that are vibrant for, for soccer right now and, and getting even more so. And even Phoenix now where I am, you know, you can see, the, the level of, of excitement um, gearing up to the World Cup. And um, you can see a, a real vibrant, and, I, and I, can, I can see the, the talent over here getting, uh, getting even better. So I'll ask you, Leo, you know, you've been, you've been here um, over in the US not too long and been working with American players for the last couple of years. So you've got to see um, the good qualities, um, I would say the difficulties that they have compared to, to players within the system in Europe, what would you say uh, the big differences are? Um, it's probably, it's a little, a little diffi difficult just because of the different structure. Um, over in England, uh, from, from what we're used to, um, football is everything. Uh, we know that. It's, the, it's pretty much the only sport that, that people play. Um, and growing up, you, you either play football or, or, or you don't, um, and you don't really do many other sports. And that was certainly the, the case for, for myself. And I think over here, it's, it's a little different in terms of there's so many different sports to be able to take up um, and, and perform at. And also the time, the time scale. Um, you'll be doing, uh, from, from now moving over here, you'll, you'll have a season of playing flag football. You'll have a season of, of doing um, maybe, maybe softball or baseball. Um, and then the time that you spend on soccer is a, is a little bit less. And I think probably what we and the foundations and the fundamentals that we got taught just for s simply doing it for, for a little bit longer and it being the only sport makes, uh, makes the system a little bit different. But what I would say is since I've been out here, the talent that I've seen um, is certainly high um, and probably um, higher than, than I was expecting, um, if, I'm being, if I'm being honest, uh, which has been great. And you, you look at now the, the elite platforms that are, are getting put together, growing, uh, going through the system, you can see them making, making a bit of a difference, so, which, is, which is great. So we just started to have a few questions coming in. Um, first one from say Mane, saying uh, he's 30, he lives in Corona, California, can I participate? Yes, we, we don't have an age limit, of course. Um, it's important that you fit and, and can play at a high level. Um, we have had players sign as, as old as 27, 28, come into the events who have signed in Europe. So, yeah, um, we, we also have experienced pros that have, have come out to the events. So um, there's not an age limit, but, of course, we recommend that you, you're at a high level and, and have high-level experience. Um, and the California event, that's... Um, June 24 or 26, so not too far away from, from
on Corona. Uh, next, we've got next question. Where will the coaches be coming from this summer? Um, Lee, do you want to answer that couple of the, uh, you obviously, you know, some of the ones coming over. Yeah, I mean, the one, the one great thing that uh, PSC have, have, have got is they've got a great network. Um, and I've, I've noticed that since I've moved, moved over here and also been, been working um, for the last few, um, few years uh, back in Europe. The connection that PSC has got is massive, um, which is great and great for, for players that are coming on, onto the combine. I think this summer we've got, um, we've got coaches coming from Europe, um, managers and coaches coming over from Europe. We've got scouts that are scouting for different, different teams over there as well. Um, we've got, um, we've got players uh, that are actually playing in the, the MLS uh, Next Pro, um, uh, who are scouting for them teams as well. Uh, we've got USL Championship managers and uh, and coaches. So a whole array of of, of different um, uh, different standards, different levels. And I think that helps the players because it puts you in where you are in your, your situation right then. You might be a young player coming through who needs to get some experience and there might be a real level for you to be able to, to get involved in, get some games under your belt and then, and then hopefully step on to the next, um, the next step of your, of your, of your footballing career. Um, so, and, and likewise, you've got some real top managers that have, have managed at a, a real high level um, in terms of some some coaches that are, you know they, they come with us a, a lot of the time in, in terms of Dave Irvine and and um, Micah Anhausen who you know have seen everything there is to see over over here in America um, and their their knowledge and wisdom about the game uh, only helps me as a as a as a new coach but also you as players because. Their, their experience in the game um, is is one that you you need to take some advice from. So, people like that, as well as existing managers that are currently playing, uh, sorry, uh, managing um, over here and, and also abroad, which is same as I say, great for great for players that are uh, thinking of signing up. I think the big the big thing is players are going to get different levels. So we're not we're not unrealistic in terms of the players' next step. Of course, if you're coming out of college or the youth game or, you know, playing League 2, NPSL at that level, we're looking to, to give players a chance that they can make the next step. And it's and it's not too high. Um, so, USL League 1, we had a lot of those clubs come in the winter. Championship, NISA, MLS Next Pro within the US. And then, of course, Scandinavia, where we've had a lot of our success stories. Really, level level 3, level 4 over there. Malta, Finland, Faroe Islands, where we've placed a lot of players. So just trying to maximise the opportunity as, as much as possible for, for American players. Um, is 22 years old too late to take part? No, not at all. Most of our players actually come a, a college graduates, 22, 23, 24. So a lot of players have signed at that age, so definitely uh, not too late. I think that's that's obviously a good age, Tom. You know, you yeah. you look at it, and they they're finishing college. Um, obviously, wanting to to go on their next steps, which is which is great. So I think twenty two, especially over here, probably coming from England, you'd say that was, um, you know, coming through the academy system. It's uh, it's a little bit older, but over here, it's it's probably looked at as young. So um, no, it's a good age. What helps players stand out and show promise? Good question. It's a very good question. Yeah, I, I think that's that's always the most difficult to answer because every every person, every coach, scout has a different opinion of the game. So um, sometimes coaches are looking for specific attributes or specific positions. So you know, some clubs might might just be coming to look for a right back at this event and be lo looking for certain skills. Um, and then obviously lots lots of clubs just come looking for talent in general. Um, one of the coaches always says, if you can't pass it, you can't control it, and you're not athletic, then you're not going to be able to play this game. And, and he's correct. So I think the fundamentals, of course, uh, are very important. Um, and always to be able to stand out, you're not going to get an opportunity if you can't do the fundamentals. Um, and of course, you've got to have a, a little bit of something special. If, if we're here looking at lots of players, it's important. You do have a little bit of something special depending on your position. You could be a goalkeeper. That's a great shot stopper. Uh, you could be a striker, obviously. That scores lots of goals, something. 
something like that to be able to stand out is it's very important in order to to really get a further opportunity what about you Lee? what's your what would you I, was say? Just, I was just going to say i think for me probably the biggest standout would be your physicality especially on a three-day combine um because uh, players um, that, that come here with a good high physical level um, it's what managers and coaches are looking for they 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 effectively want to take you into their to their ranks um, and you're going to have to fit in pro quite quickly um, with with that professional environment now if you can't if you can't perform a, a physical high level um, during their training sessions day in day out um, you know you're going to you're going to struggle to uh, to uh, to be able to impose yourself on on the players that are already there so i think one thing i would say is physically make sure if you if you come in on the combine and you've signed up or you're looking to sign up make sure you've you've done your research in terms of what you need to be doing um physically and what level you need to be at so you can show your best and i think we've seen we've seen time and time again where players have come um done really really well the first day and probably tailed off the second and third day um, and probably been the difference of them maybe maybe getting a trial, getting signed, um, or or whatnot. So I would say make sure you're physically at the level. And the other thing is 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 be be a team player um, because effectively, same as I say, these coaches and managers that are coming here to look at you, they want to see that you can go into their environment and 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 fit in straight away. And if you're a player that is is an encouraging player, you want to get the best out of yourself and your teammates. Um, they know that they can take you in to their group and you're not going to upset the apple cart. Um, because if you're a player that is, is not um, giving out, out, out the right messages and, and the right persona uh, and you're, you're arguing with your teammates over the three days, you know, it's, it's going to put a, probably a red mark over, over your name and, and they're probably not going to take, uh, take you seriously to take you back to their club. So, yeah, attitude um, and willingness to, uh, to work hard and making sure you're at a really physical level. And then technically, um, you know, you, you, you know that you've got to have that um, in order to, uh, to be at the professional level. Another question, what's the average number of attendance at a combine? Good question. It's important that you're being looked at. Um, and, and really, we structure our events to make sure no one's overlooked and everyone's getting a, a proper look from all the coaches over the three days. Uh, we have no more than three games during the day so typically we'll have the two 11 v 11 games per day at the combine so everyone has eyes on, on every player there in attendance um average number typically typically 60 to, to 80 players is normally what we'll get at each event uh, john hollinger how are you john good to see you commenting on here so what's the age range ideal age range for a goalkeeper Good question again. That is a very good question. We've had obviously young goalkeepers who've been signed, and then you know ones again who are who are past the college age getting signed. The ideal range is a difficult one. It just really depends on what the the club is looking for in terms of a goalkeeper. You know, we we had Paul Cooper we mentioned earlier on who signed from our UK residential program. Paul was nineteen and. He's really gone into to Barnsley in League One as a as a number two, number three, because that's what they were looking for. Um, and then again, we've had goalkeepers, 24, 25, 26, get signed at that age. So again, it just really just depends on what a club is looking at in terms of if they're looking for an experienced number one, if they're looking for a, for a young goalkeeper who they're looking to mould. Um, so again, I think each club is really different in, in what they're coming to look at. What would you say, Lee, on that one? I think the keeper's probably the one the one position that you can't really put an age on, you know, because as a keeper you can you know, some of the best keepers I played with didn't come into their own till they were thirty, thirty two. Um so I, I think as a keeper there's no there's no right and wrong. Um ideally, you know, you you wanna get as experienced as quick as possible at men's football. Um especially as a keeper. And then after that, I think people trust you uh, to be able to do a job for them. So, but on, on the combines, I think um, we, we, we've seen a couple of, uh, especially in California when we was there, um, a couple of the coaches was really interested in, in uh, the, older, the older ones um, that had sort of been not around the block, but, um, you know, they played some games. So it's, it's a really tough one when it comes to keepers.
Um, I, I would say the one thing I would urge any keeper who are coming on a combine is take a real passion and and try and keep the ball out of the net because I think the art of that is, is probably going out of the game a little bit. Um, people are so fascinated in, in playing out from the back and being good with your feet. I think we've lost a little bit of that ruthlessness to keep the ball out of our net. So uh, take pride and, and ownership in, in actually keeping clean sheets while you're there, and that will get noticed. So Definitely the most difficult position, I would say, in regards to you know probably getting an opportunity, although we had a lot of goalkeepers have success to lorries over the last few months as a goalie. Uh, of course, there's only normally two, three roster spots as a goalie. So definitely feel for you as a goalkeeper compared to if you're a striker or, or a centre-back, you've got obviously uh, more of a probability of, of getting a contract. Um, so, yeah, goalkeepers is, is, is definitely, um, it's not an easy job and you have to be very patient. Um, one player recently I, I saw playing in the USL Championship and and playing in the championship final last year, and he had been a number three uh, and been in and out at different clubs over the last six or seven years and probably never really had a good run of game. So it was it was great to see him not give up and and really get a good opportunity in the end. Um, next question, 15 to 19-year-olds in the USA, no consistent development path. Okay, uh, We're just trying to keep it all related to the combine if we can. Um, although Hello, somebody's asking about you at Exeter Lee. You must be a fan of yours. Mate, everybody <laughs> over there will be asleep now. So, um, <laughs> must be uh, the only Exeter fan in America, probably. There. <laughs> Do players get signed at the Combines? I'll let you answer that one later. Start. Do they? Hey? Yes. Well, that's, that's an obvious yes, yes question. I mean, the last, um, the last few that uh, I've been to, and, and obviously I was in New York when um, Anthony was there as well. So, yeah, um, there's 100% a yes. Uh, obviously, um, there's no guarantees uh, because the sports world is a difficult world to get into. Whatever, whatever sport at the elite level you're trying to get into, it's, it's tough. And, the, and as you go up the ladder, the... the, the elite level gets harder and harder. So it's not a guarantee, but it's down to, to you and your performances and how well um, you do, uh, which will always help your course. The one thing I, I, I would say, and I've said it to numerous players before, is you need to give yourself as much exposure as possible uh, to be able to, uh, to get to the next level because it might not be the combine that you turn up to that you get signed. I've seen some of the best players that have turned up at the Combine um, not go away with contracts. And I've seen some not the best players at the Combine get signed um, just because they were in the right place at the right time and the manager there needed a, a right back when the best player was actually a winger. Um, and it's just look at the draw. So sometimes it's right place, right time. So give yourself as much exposure as possible to obviously up, up your uh, opportunities of getting picked up. Got a few more people asking if we come in DC or Philadelphia soon. Um, we might be in the area again in the winter. All our winter events will get posted um, by early July. So obviously keep an eye on our events page for all of that. We'll be in different destinations and, and some of the same destinations again in, in December, January. Um, what's the percentage of players to make it pro at the combine? Another good question. Um, there's not a set percentage at the combine. It all depends on, on the quality that comes to each event. Um, I'll give you an example. We've probably one of our best ever combines. I remember it in Fort Lauderdale probably about five years ago, in my opinion anyway. Um, we had a lot of, lot of good players there and we had about 10 or 11 players get trials or contracts um, around the world. Um, and then you can have an event where it, they might not be anything that stands out at an event and that you think is at, at the level um, to make it in the pro game. So it really just depends on, on the quality that comes out. On average, I'd say there's always, there's always two to three players that we go as a staff, as an agency and say, yes, he can play at some level professionally, be, be it USL Championship, be it Sweden, Division 2. There's, there's always two or three players um, and, that, and that's why we do these events that, you know, you go around the US, there's so much quality talent around there that, that can play this game. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's up, 
going to be a very good opportunity for any player that comes out and, and a chance to be able to, to make that next step. What would you say, Lee, in terms of what, what you've seen at the Combines um, in regards to talent? Uh, I've, I've been, been really impressed. I mean, um, the one thing that does impress me, um, and, and since I've been working with American players, is, is their attitudes. Um, it's one thing that I go away from, and, and probably why I'm over here right now, um, you know, when I got the opportunity and you gave me the opportunity to come out here and coach, it was purely the excitement came is that I was working with American players. Um, they've got a real willingness um, to learn, uh, to listen and learn and, and do their utmost to get the best out of themselves um, and their talents. And sometimes that's, that's not, doesn't always get them to, to play pro, but they can always look themselves. And the players that I've, I've worked with um, uh, on a high percentage, I would say, would be able to look themselves in a mirror and go, um, and go, I gave it everything I, I possibly had. Um, and I think then you can be content that, you know, you couldn't have done any more, which is a nice place to be. In terms of talent, I think me and you have sat down after, after combines uh, or after a combine season. And, you know, we, could, we, we write down our best sort of 20 players from the six or seven combines that we've done over that, that period. And we always, we always look back and we go, do you know what, I would, take, I would take that team right there into battle to the USL Championship, uh, USL 1, and I'd feel very comfortable in going in at that level and being able to compete. And that's, and that's testament to the, to the standard over here. And, um, and that's why PSC are, are so good. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm biased, obviously, because I'm working for, for, for us. But the, the fact that we're giving opportunity where there isn't. You know, there's, there's not always a, a straightforward pathway to becoming a pro, whether that's through the elite, elite uh, pa platform. You know, we're giving opportunity where there perhaps isn't. And, uh, and I think that's what's uh, so great about it. So the talent's been amazing. Uh, I've looked at it uh, for now a few months and, um, yeah, really excited for this coming up uh, season, the summer season, and hopefully, um, you know, be able to see some gems and, uh, and get them uh, to the next level. Got a few asking about different coaches. If you go on the event page, um, it has a pretty good update of which coaches are coming to which events. Um, obviously, each event is a little bit different. Some coaches will come out to one event, some will come out to, to three or four. So check out the events page online and click the destination, and then we should it should be updated of, of who is coming to what event. So again, different levels, different countries. Make sure you keep an eye on the events page, though, for the exact information. Um, how would you know what to work on before the combine? Good question. I think the biggest thing for me, don't, like Lisa said earlier, don't come to a combine unfit. I think it's important, whatever level you're playing at, you're playing regular regular football. doesn't mean training, training on your own two or three times a week. It's getting into the, the best environment you can be. Ideally, right now, hopefully most, players come into the events are, are playing UPSL, USL League 2, uh, somewhere around that level and, and they're playing games and, and training at a good level. I think if you do that then you're going to come into the events and be able to showcase to the best of your ability because see, three, three games in three days isn't easy and especially in the summer when, when the temperatures are pretty high, it's definitely uh, it's not an easy task to be able to play three games in three days and we understand that as coaches as well of course uh, but very, very important that you fit and, and you are playing regularly. What would you say, Lee, on that one? What to work on? Is there any certain areas? Or No, I think it's, it's probably a difficult question, but I think the, the, the lads that I get to speak to through the VIP, I always tell them that, um, you know, to get to the next level, you've got to be exceptional at one of the four corners. And, uh, you know, if you look at it and you look at techni technically, tactically, socially, physically, you look at them four corners, and I think to get placed, uh, from what I've seen, you've got to be exceptional at one of them. So either physically you're exceptional and you're able to back that up with sort of six or sevens out of ten for the other three. Um, likewise, you might be technically um, a ten out of ten um, and outstanding, but the other three have to be a, a six or a seven um, to back that up. So in one of them corners, you've got to be exceptional. Now, I don't know what that is for you. Um, but just make sure that you keep that and then you work on the other three. Um, you know, the, other th the last thing I would say is that um, the art of being able to play quickly 
um, is is something that I would say is 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 massively needed in the game. And um, so, knowing your next pass um, and being able to to execute that is is massive. Um, it's probably if you're making decisions on the ball after the ball's come to you, it's going to be too late. Um, and I think coaches and managers will 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 see that and they'll make uh, make decisions off that. So be able to uh, to play quickly is is another one. But the other the other things that you've mentioned, yeah, you've got it. You've got to have. A lot of people asking about the the level and is there a mix of Division One, Two, Three college players? Yeah, players players come from all over. We have players that are, are playing under nineteen in in the MLS next. Uh, we have players in Division One, Two, Three. We have. We have pros that come to the event that don't have a club. So players come from all different areas, different countries, uh, different states. So, yeah, there's a, good, there's a good mix of players. Of course, that's important for us to be able to, to gauge your level, that the talent is high and we can see the standard of every player. Um, somebody asking here, Lee, about the, the VIP package. Could you just tell us a little bit more about the VIP package and how that works for players who, who sign up for that? Yeah, um, it's been exciting for me uh, to be to be involved in that over this last uh, six months. Uh, but how, how the VIP works is that um, at PSC we take real good pride uh, and a, a big a big pride in in uh, the evaluations that we give you um, and that you can take back home and work on. And I think this year we're gonna we're gonna change things up a little bit and we're gonna sit down personally with me after the combine. And we're going to talk through your evaluation um, sheet so you can also understand it a little bit better and, and look to implement some of the, probably more the, the cons. Um, so you can, you can go and work on them, go back and, and hopefully come back in a better shape. So we'll really break down your evaluation sheet um, and hopefully get you to a point where you're improving. Um, obviously, you would get um, the PSC match kits. Uh, that comes as standard. Um, we then... Uh, you'll get the video package, which is um, which is standard as well. And then what we've what we've chucked in this year, uh, which I think is going to be really really big and important, is um, three CPD events. So we will talk and we will, we will set up web webinars, um, three webinars a year, that we will talk on um, uh, defence, midfield, and attack. And we'll break them um, units and position specific things down, so you can come on. Also ask questions, but really know what it is to uh, to work at the elite level, and that will be done by um, a UFA uh, UEFA Pro licensed coach, uh, along with myself, uh, that will be putting them webinars on. So a real big coup this year to be able to add that to the VIP package um, for everyone that joins, and to be able to same as I say, help them develop and learn and move forward. So yeah. Got a message from Cedric. What position in a team is the hardest for you to see a good player? Question. Hardest position. I mean, I would say if you're a centre back, centre mid, centre forward, it's probably the easiest position to stand out because most most teams are always looking to kind of add in those areas um, down the middle, down the spine of a team. I, I would say if you're an outside back, it's probably Probably one I would say over the years that is maybe the most the most difficult, um, just because in terms of scouting when you speak to teams, it's probably the position they're not maybe looking for as a standout player in their team. So I would say for me that is probably the hardest um, position I would say to stand out. Of course, we've had lots of players signing those those positions, but. Probably just from my experience, that, that's what I would say. What about you, Lee, in terms of position? Yeah, it's, it's a um, good question. But one thing I would add to that is that uh, we've seen players come on the combine and they've signed up maybe as a, a centre midfielder. Um, and one of the coaches have really liked the player and, and what attributes he's got and said, maybe I, I'd like to see him as a centre back. Um, and they've played centre back, and also got got trials and, and scouted off that. So um, it's not always coming and thinking that I I really want to be a striker, and that's the position I'm gonna I'm gonna put down and I'm gonna play. Sometimes it, it, it's being flexible to know that you know a coach might see something different in me, and I know why I've been coming to the combines. I've certainly seen that where a where a um, uh, 
manager or a, uh, a coach is, is looking for a right winger. I know it happened in California, actually. Um, and one of the coaches had seen a left winger, wanted to try him out on the right wing um, because that's what they were desperate for. And, and so things like that happen. So um, I would say when you come on the combines, make sure you're flexible. Yeah, I think that's important because we have had a couple of players from experience let themselves down by being unwilling to, to change positions. Of course, you want to play in your position where you feel most comfortable. But as Lee says, if someone sees you and thinks you're a better right back than a right winger, you know, if you want to play this game and get a, a contract and that's your number one goal, you do have to be open and, and ready to play wherever the coach wants you to play. The Arizona Combine will be hosted in surprise. Yep, it will be hosted at Ottawa College. Um, it's where our UPSL team plays. It's a great facility. So that's, that's June the 789. It'll be at Ottawa College in Surprise. Best advice for non-EU players. Which countries do you see the most success for non-EU players? Another good question from John. John's experienced. He's, he's been in lots of different countries, I know. Um, you know, Scandinavia is probably the place where we've had the most success for, for non-EU players mainly because, one, the level is achievable over there compared to, to Spain, Germany, um, and, and also, I think, Scandinavian coaches like American players. Um, you know, we've, we've had hundreds of players go, go to level two, three, four over there, so it's been a really good path for a lot of players coming to the events. We have a really good network over there, um, but not just Scandinavia, we have other smaller countries, really, where... Again, we're just we're trying to get players that come to the events, um, you know, the, the best the best opportunity for them to to make the next step. Um, we've got different different coaches coming from Malta, coming from Finland, um, but I would say Scandinavia would probably be the most realistic step for for non EU players. Lee, what about you? What are your thoughts on, from what you've seen in terms of American players playing abroad? I, th I think it's it's great for for them players, and and what I, why I would say that is that it's getting them um, first team football, and also it's getting them into a environment that, where they're training and playing uh, day in day out. Uh, you see a lot of college players uh, leave leave uh, their environment after sort of three four months of playing, which um, in my humble opinion is is not enough to go into the pro level, and I think what them what what their moves do, whether it's to be Scandinavia or even um, with, with Richard out in the Faroe Islands, um, it gives them an opportunity to be playing and training day in, day out um, at a high level. And then that stepping stone um, can always be made to an even higher level. And I think that's what, what you'd be looking to do in terms of use, use them opportunities as stepping stones. Um, and you look at Rich out in the Faroes, um, you know that the level of coaching on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be very high. So not um, sometimes people may may look at the standard, but it's what it's the standard that you're setting yourself day in. And if you're getting good coaching on a day-to-day -day basis, you know that you're going to improve uh, regardless of the uh, of the standard you're playing against. So that's what I would I would say. Um, and uh, when these opportunities come to to put yourself in them professional environments. You know, you, you, need to, you need to have a real, real um, focus about taking them options up because, uh, you know, they, they're not always there. Um, so when they are, make sure you take them. I, th I think that's the biggest thing I, I've seen over the years from, from the events for, for the players that really stand out is it's taking the opportunity that's given to you. I mean, as I understand, you know, most players are wanting to play USL Championship or, or similar level abroad but that that's not always the, the case you know you can't always jump into the the level that that you think you're at you have to go and earn earn playing time sometimes in a lower country and, and prove yourself and i think that a lot of the guys that have gone on to be successful have, have not always started at, at the level at the usl championship level they've had to go play sweden division two and and get minutes and get experience and get get good video highlights playing at a decent level in order to, to make it a further step. And again, I turned on the, the USL final, I think, last, last year and watching the Tampa game. And it was two or three players playing in that team who are now on really good contracts uh, and experience within the league. And, and I know for a fact the first few years they played, 
they weren't on great contracts they weren't in great particularly great conditions but they they worked hard they worked at their game they got minutes they got experience and 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 now they're at the level where they deserve to be playing at so you, you do have to be open minded um like Lee just said Richard in the Faroe Islands who comes to our events Faroe Islands might not be the place that you dream of playing at but it, it gives players an opportunity to to get played to be a full-time player and and make the next step so be open especially in, in the evaluations and the feedback and and to different clubs and countries be open um to to playing in different and getting different experiences I'd say I think the other thing with that Tom as well is that you've got if you look at the England squad right now, um, and it doesn't matter what level you, you look at, um, you've got to go and earn your stripes. And we might all dream that I want to go and play in the Premier League, uh, which, which we do, but it might not be there for you straight away. And you look at most of the players that, have, uh, that are in the England squad. I look at Harry Kane now. He had to go on numerous loans to lower league clubs to go and earn the right to go and play for Tottenham's first team. And, um, you know, that, that him getting to, to be the leading goal scorer for England and now Tottenham didn't just happen overnight and him deciding I'm going to play for Tottenham. It, it was him going to earn his strikes at Lake Norian, Leicester, I, I believe at QPR as well. Um, you know, these clubs that, uh, that he probably didn't dream I was going to go to, but he had to to go and earn the right to go and play at the highest level. And that's exactly the same as what you're going to say. You know, you might want to go and play in the championship. You might want to go and play the MLS. Um, but you might go and have to earn your stripes at um, a lower league, get some games under your belt, um, go and prove yourself, and then go and make the step up. And it happens time and time again with top, top players all around the world where they have to go out on loan, they have to go out to a lower league to go and, to go and perform, um, show everybody that they, they're good enough for that level and then jump up and make the steps up. And, 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 that's, and that's how what learning's all about. OK, guys, well, hopefully we've made, been able to answer a lot of the questions here and we've given you a lot of time and some good feedback. Again, um, if we have missed your question, then please shoot us a message on here or via email um, and we will get back to you with, with any question that we've missed and, and any more advice that we can give you about the combines. Um, hopefully we give you a good insight in, into what to expect um, and we've given you some good feedback. But, Thank you again for, for your time tonight. We'll be doing this again um, at another point before all the combines begin. Uh, thanks again for joining and, and have a good evening. Cheers, Tom.